My name is Jean, and I live on the island of Bali, Indonesia. I feel so blessed to live in this beautiful place, and even though my life here is quiet and small, filled with ordinary activities, and honestly, not that many people, but it is here that the loneliness that has followed me throughout my life has been soothed. They say that loneliness is the absence of connection, not company. I think that for many people, myself included, it's less about being alone and more about feeling a lack of real, meaningful connection with others. That sense of being truly seen and heard, perhaps even understood. For most of my life, I've tried to alleviate my loneliness by searching for people with whom I have that click, that spark or that zing which may signify a new meaningful friendship or relationship in my life. This can be really stressful because ultimately, my experience has led me to believe that it's not really about how many people you meet, but whether the right persons are placed in your path in life, which unfortunately is something completely outside our control. On the other hand, over the years, I've come to understand better the person that I am. Introvert, sensitive, a homebody, and that the choice of where I live greatly influences how lonely I feel in life. Before we get started on the video, I want to thank BetterHelp, who's sponsoring this video in order of May being the Mental Health Awareness Month. Loneliness affects all of us, and sometimes, perhaps, during certain periods of our lives or certain situations, it can be too much to bear alone, and that's where therapy can come in helpful. BetterHelp offers customized online therapy via video phone or live chat sessions, whichever you prefer. For people like me on the move, BetterHelp ensures access to mental health care whenever and wherever we need. It's actually more affordable than traditional offline therapy and financial aid is available if necessary. BetterHelp assesses your needs and then matches you with a therapist within 48 hours. There's over 20,000 licensed therapists with a wide range of expertise, and if you decide that your therapist doesn't suit, you can request a new one at any time free of charge. Of course, everything you share is confidential. I've been using BetterHelp for some time now, and my therapist, Christine, has helped me build some useful insights to cope with the fading out of certain friendships from my past. This Mental Health Awareness Month, if you or someone you know is struggling, share BetterHelp with them. You can get 10% off your first month using my link in the description below. BetterHelp.com slash Jean. That's help, as in H-E-L-P. Like most people I know, I grew up, studied, and worked in big urban cities amongst millions of other people in Singapore, Taiwan, Japan, Dubai for two years. Even in the tiny dot that is Singapore, living and working there means being surrounded by almost 6 million other people. But the loneliest thing for me is that within such a large collective of people, I still struggle to find meaningful connection. Despite having so many people in and out of my life path daily, despite being hyper-connected to others through technology, despite being bombarded with so many ways to meet more people, if you desire it, sometimes even despite being surrounded by family, who loved me so very much, but did not share the same perspective and goals in life that I did. That sense of anonymity in big cities that some people find exhilarating was for me more a sense of being swept along by a crowd that I'm lost in. Being surrounded by so many people, but yet feeling that most of my human interactions are meaningless and depersonalized, transactional even, like the small talk with your colleagues at work whom you don't really feel very comfortable with, was so challenging. Big city life offers so many exciting opportunities and possibilities, and that can be an amazing experience. But all that also tends to foster in people this mentality of trying to maximize everything by rushing from one task to the next, one place to the next, and so on. Often life in these places just gets pretty intense. Many people feeling the fatigue just start preferring even to spend what little free time they have just scrolling social media, 
rather than making real effort to connect with real people. And there's always comparison and judgment, if not by others, then by yourself. I remember that it was really hard to feel that I can just be myself and that is enough for others. I remember always worrying over things like, am I dressed fashionably enough? Is my job good enough? Am I driving a fancy enough car? Because this is the environment in which I grew up, I never even questioned if there could be another way until my life went off on a complete tangent. I quit my big city, big law job and moved, first to Vietnam and then Bali. When I say Bali, you may be thinking about the hot clubs and thronging masses of Kuta and Seminyak, or the super hip and happening digital nomad crowds in Changu. But the truth is, our life here could not be further from that. We live in a quiet little neighborhood way down south in Uluwatu, surrounded by lots of nature and chill, pleasant local people. It's slow here, but authentic, simple, but very real. I love that in our small neighborhood, people know us and we know them by sight, if not by name. There's always a friendly nod, a smile, a greeting. I am no longer just a faceless person in the crowd. Here, we can afford to live in a little house with a garden. So we have the space and the time to care for our Bali dogs. Sniffing their nice doggy smell, playing with them in the garden in the evenings makes me feel so grounded in this world. In the small circle of our quiet life here, there's never too many choices, but the places we frequent remembers what we always order and is always served with a smile. I never worry about booking social appointments the way one schedules teeth cleanings. I can just rock up to any of my usual hangouts in the area, and often, there's someone I already know in there that I can just pull up a chair and join in with. Or it's just okay to sit alone by yourself drinking your tea, observing the nice weather, cause really, who's judging? <laughs> they say that you can't want something you've never had, and I guess in my case, this is definitely true. It wasn't until I left a big city life behind for such a small rural lifestyle that I realized how lonesome big urban settings just made me feel. There's apparently even a term for it, situational loneliness they call it. Of course, I'm not suggesting that everyone should transplant their lives away from big cities or that busy, efficient, exciting lives are bad. I think it really depends on the individual's preferences. But I know that personally, for me, living this way in a small, simple community has allowed me to live my life here as the best version of myself. To have the time and energy to be fully present with my family, friends and neighbours. Feeling a sense of belonging here in this neighbourhood. Appreciating the simple beauty in everyday normal life here with everyone. The sunsets, the delicious local foods, the relaxed pace of living on Bali time. Perhaps you have a different opinion on situational loneliness and how to deal with it. I would love to hear your thoughts, so do share your thoughts with us in the comments down below. I'm sure it will be an interesting discussion. Thank you so much for watching this video as always, and if it resonated with you, do click that like button. That helps this video reach more people who may be feeling the same way as you do. Consider subscribing to keep up with more videos about our lives here in Bali. And in the meantime, I wish you wonderful days wherever you are living right now. Speak to you again soon, next Saturday.